what inspired you to write about French cooking? Yeah, so, you know, this is something that a lot of people don't know about me, but I learned how to cook in France. Um, when I was a kid, we went to France every summer. I went with my parents. They were psychiatrists, and this was back in the, in the 70s and 80s when psychiatrists would take the whole month of August off which they don't do anymore, thank God for their patients, but they used to do that, it was a thing. And we would go to France every summer. Uh, my parents had fallen in love with France um, even earlier in the 60s before my sister and I were born. Um, they went on one of those crazy trips. Um, they were graduating from medical school and my great aunt and great uncle Jack took them on a like, you know, seven countries in 20 days trip to Europe. And my mother just, you know, loves to talk about all the different countries. And then they finally got to France and they were like, oh, we feel like we're home. And, and they, they had steak freed and they saw just, you know, the culture and the art and the music. And my mother is a, plays the piano. So it was just, it all came together for them. And they, so every year they would pack the whole family up and we would house exchange, which, you know, now people are kind of used to house exchanges, but mm -hmm. back before the internet, it was, it was a very strange thing to do. It was unusual. Um, and we would write these letters, you know, my parents would type out letters on blue airmail stationery and they'd mail them to France. And then weeks later, we would get a couple of replies and we'd arrange an exchange. Um, and we would go and spend August in some adorable town in the countryside. And we'd go to markets every day and we'd shop and we'd cook together. And we didn't do this in Brooklyn where I grew up because they were, they were doctors, they worked late hours. I, we just didn't spend time that way as a family. So to me, France is, um, it's just an incredibly special place with the most delicious food where I learned everything that I know about cooking and then have since, you know, built on as an adult. So that, I wanted to tell that story in this book. I think this is a wonderful story. And one thing that I personally really love about, about your book is that I can be often disappointed when I go to a French restaurant or when I read I read a French cookbook that is doing some sort of caricature of French culture. And I really love that your book is showing off how you can use the French technique and just twist it to make it something that looks like you and and still is not is not um uh representative of what French of French cooking can do. And that's really something that I really love about your book. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I wasn't going for authenticity because I don't have that voice, you know, but I was going for my impression and my, um, my feelings about it. And I'm very practical also. You know, I think a lot of people, Americans, when they think of French food, Emily, they don't think of what you're cooking for dinner. They're thinking of what French chefs are cooking for dinner. Yeah, the cassoulet and the exactly. canard and confit canard and all of that. Exactly. And so what I also wanted to do was show what actual normal yeah. French people make for dinner, you know, and it's... Exactly. Um, market-driven, seasonal, all of the things that I embrace so much. Yeah, that, and that's, that's completely true, and we can really see it in your cookbook. So um, one question that I have for you is, um, how do you develop a recipe from a specific country using the products from an, another country? I've had that problem myself. Yeah, it's, it's hard. I, um, I had to, that's a, another thing about me writing this book is I wrote it in Brooklyn. We took the photos in France, but okay. I wrote the book in Brooklyn using American ingredients because that's who my audience is. That's who I cook with. So, um, because you can't write the same book. I mean, things are different. You know, every, the butter is, the butter is really different. Right. Um, you know, the tomatoes are different. Everything is just, it just tastes, you just have to balance it differently. Not to say one is better than the other. I mean, we're really, you know, when I was a kid, I could say, yes, everything is better in France, but we have caught up in the States and we have amazing food here, but it is different. So I have, you have to adjust. Yeah, um, I, I, I totally understand this. Um, uh, another question, and then don't worry, everyone, we're going to dive into We're going to get to the cooking. <laughs> yeah, and then everyone's going to be able to ask questions as Val mentioned. I'm just going to ask two more questions. Then we're going to get to the cooking and you will be able to ask your question. And if we have a little more time at the end, we'll also take other questions. Um, so why did you choose this recipe in particular to cook with us this evening? So the recipe spaghetti with anchovies, tomato and basil. I picked it because it's something, it's pantry friendly. You know, most of the ingredients are things people can easily get. Um, I know the tomatoes might be tricky, but you know, um, you can buy tinned fish, 
Um, everyone has pasta these days. You can certainly make it with um, olives instead of anchovies. If you want to have a vegetarian version, you don't need to have the butter if you want to have a vegan version. So it, it's an adaptable recipe and one that I think everyone would be able to cook along with me. Great. Um, and final question before uh, we start the cooking. Um, what do you think makes a great cook? I think passion. Um, I think you have to be passionate about food and eating. You have to be curious too. You have to, you have to say, oh, what is that? I've never had that. And if you are a good eater and you love food and you're passionate about it, I think you can become, a, if you're not a great cook already, I think you can become a great cook. It's just a matter of really knowing what you want to eat also. You know, you have to know what tastes good to you. So that means paying attention. Okay, so I'm going to let you take over with the cooking. I might just interrupt you when I see questions. As Val mentioned, you use your, um, either you use your reaction button and I will see a small emoji on your video and I will be able to um, take your uh, question or you can write that down. I see that we, um, no, we don't have a question quite yet, but someone already so that uh, chat uh, icon. So if you have question, you can use that and um, I will read them. So okay. that, the floor is yours. Okay, so um, this is gonna be a little wonky because um, I'm using my computer because Zoom doesn't really work that well on my phone. So um, excuse the way that this has to be, but I'm gonna show you my cutting board. So here we go. Emily, can people see it? Uh, yes, uh, someone is already asking, should we have our water boiling already? Okay, I have already cooked, yes, boil your water. Um, you're going to have to, you're probably not going to be able to do this in real time with me. Maybe you will, but boil your water, get your water boiling, salt the water really, really well. Chefs always say that you should be, this, the water should taste as salty as the sea. And that salt in the water is seasoning the pasta. I have cheated. I am sorry to say I never do this for real, but I had to cook the pasta ahead or I'd be going crazy right now. So <laughs> my pasta is cooked. It is very, very al dente. So it, it should, hopefully it'll be all right. Um, it's not ideal. We are going to eat it for dinner though, so it's going to be fine. Um, okay, so now I have, so you, I, you probably saw on my cutting board, I had garlic. I'm going to hold up. I have six cloves of garlic. So that is a lot of garlic, but that is what makes this so good. I have a bunch of anchovy fillets. I like um, anchovies that are um, oil packed, brown anchovies packed in oil. This is a really good brand. It is a giant can because I'm buying stuff in bulk because, you know, that's where that's quarantine cooking for you, right? Um, red pepper flakes. So these are just little, you know, chili flakes. And I'm going to put a pinch of them down. Uh, I think that was too much of a pinch. I'm going to take some of them off because my daughter's eating this too. So sometimes I get carried away and we want her to be able to have, she's 11 and she loves this pasta, but she, I make it milder for her when she's eating with us. So, excuse me. Okay, and then I have chopped herbs. You saw a big pile of chopped herbs. That's parsley and mint and basil. And honestly, I just went out on my deck and I just picked a bunch of stuff. So there's, there's, all, there's love edge, there's all kinds of stuff in there. Use whatever greens you can get. You need the green herbs for brightness and freshness. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop everything together. So if you've got all, if you all have your mise en place, grab your chef's knife and uh, chop with me. I'm just chopping all of the ingredients together. I've, you saw I cheated and chopped the herbs up a little bit, but normally what I do is I just have the, I just chop it all. I have the herbs kind of, you know, in big pieces. I'm gonna, I'm chopping my garlic now. I'm gonna see if I can angle this so you can see what, can you see what I'm doing? Yes. I'm all, yes. Definitely, we can see. Okay. And I, and I see people nodding their heads saying yes. Okay, good. So sometimes I have capers in this mix. This is my salty base. Really, you can put anything in this. You know, it's just salt and pungency and flavor. And uh, you could do onion, shallot is really good. So the point here is I want to make kind of a paste with all this stuff. And then I'm gonna fry it all together. So now you might be thinking, well, pasta doesn't seem like a very French dish, does it? And I mean, people in France eat pasta all the time. We always had pasta when we were there. Emily, isn't that true? Yeah, definitely, all the time. Yeah. So, and this, so the dish, this dish was um, one that was inspired 
Um, so it's really kind of an Italian dish. You know, pasta with anchovies is very Italian. Um, and I always made it just with the garlic and the anchovies. And then one summer when I was in France, I just saw these beautiful tomatoes in the, in the market and I bought them and I just chopped them up and added it. And it was so good. It was, I like to say it's a recipe for my Brooklyn kitchen inspired by Italy and then refined in France and it all comes together. And I can smell anchovies and it smells so good. So you can see I'm still going. Should, you could do this, by the way, all of you people with your food processors out on, you know, thinking, can I do this in a food processor? Yes, you can. Ah. But I like to do it by hand because I love the way it smells. And I always say cooking to me, like when this repetitive motion, what I'm doing right now, this is my, uh, you are joining me, well, right now you're not because I'm talking, but normally I, this would be my meditation. This is what I do at the end of every day to give myself quiet treat a nice moment but this, this technique Melissa takes year to um, apply to cutting like this I mean it, it's not I, no, I don't know really it is easy I mean yeah. okay I'm gonna break it down a little bit it seems I'm doing it fast but all I'm doing is one my one hand here and the other and I'm just rocking back and forth back and okay. forth back and forth you could use a garlic press Mother was in crazy about her garlic press. She pressed everything. She yeah. had any so garlic went what anywhere. Is the, what is one tool that you think is very important to have in your cushion? You can't do anything without it. I'll show you. My microplane. Oh, I love, one. One. love this. More than anything. I use this every single day. I've already used it today. I made a cake. I was showing Emily. I made a cake before you all got here. I made a cake and I, I put orange zest in it and I use that. And mm -hmm. sometimes I'll do this and I'll, I'll, take the garlic cloves and I'll grate them, but I want the, I don't want them that fine in this moment. I want them to stay a little chunky. All right. Uh, I want to ask our participant, does anyone have any questions they want to ask Melissa right now? Um, put, put, in the air, put the reaction comment, I will see the emoji and I will um, let you ask your question directly to Melissa or you can write it down. No, no question for now. Okay, I wait. I stay put. I'm not uh, a one question. Yeah. Oh, one question from um, Roby asking, which cake did you bake? Oh, I baked a snickerdoodle loaf cake. So the recipe is on the New York Times cooking website. Um, if you go to NY Times, it's snickerdoodle loaf cake. And um, it's cinnamon and brown sugar, and it is so good. And um, we are working on an Instagram story for the New York Times mm -hmm. with this recipe. So I had to make it again, oh darn, and document the whole thing. So I did that right before you got here. That's what I was doing. All right, I'm going to wash my hands and come back. Uh, we have one more, can I ask you a question, Melissa? We have one more question from uh, Gidi, or Gidi, sorry. Um, what is your feeling about using uh, the stalks of herbs? Are there some stocks to always yes. throw out? Yes, so um, I always divide herbs up in my mind into woody herbs and tender soft herbs. So if you have soft herbs like mint, like, in fact, I have this mint, look at this beautiful mint. For my garden, this is gonna become my tea later on, my tisane. I'm gonna put this right in a cup of hot water. So this, that soft stem got chopped up right in here. I had a bunch of these. Um, any soft stems, but if they're woody and hard, like rosemary, like thyme, even sage is too hard, you wanna take it off. So um, yeah, just, just look at it and, and think, okay. do I wanna eat this? If it looks like a stick, you don't wanna eat it. If mm -hmm. it looks like, you know, soft and grassy, then it's gonna be good. Okay, so now let's see about, I'm gonna see how I can position this. I'm gonna change the setup because I'm going to the stove because we're gonna fry this, we're gonna fry, up the anchovy garlic paste that I just made. And see this. Okay, so I have one question. Um, what can you remind everyone what is the brand of the anchovy you use? Yes, it is. Um, what is it exactly? It is Angostino Rucca. Angostino Rucca. And uh, following that question, someone is asking, uh, with that big tin of anchovies, do you refrigerate them and how long do they last? 
Um, I refrigerate them. They will last much longer than I will allow them to last because I will eat them very quickly. But that, that would last, you know, a year. It's, they're, salt, they're salt and oil packed, so they'll last forever. Okay, okay, great. Um, I'm heating my pan. Okay. And I've got my olive oil. This, okay. is just, this is not French olive oil. You could use French olive oil. So, yeah. Whatever. And is the lemon zest and pepper flakes in this shop mix or? Oh, did I have lemon zest in this? Someone is asking, uh, but is there any, yeah, is the, is the lemon zest and pepper flakes in this shop mix? No, the lemon zest comes in later, which <laughs> is good. They totally forgot about it. I don't even know if I have a lemon. We might not be using lemon today, or I might just use some lemon juice. I'm gonna check in the fridge and see if there's a lemon. Otherwise, Thank you. if you have it, good. If not, I'm letting my oil heat up. Yes, so Okay, I do not. Look what I have. I'll show you. This is, I keep this in the fridge at all times. This is a little bowl of lemons that have been cut up into wedges. I've taken the seeds out and I squeeze them over everything. So I'm going to add a little lemon juice at the end instead of the zest. But to try to zest that would be a nightmare. Yeah. So, so I'm not going to do very good. That's a very good tip to us. Isn't this a good tip? I, we do, yeah. we, it's so good. And my daughter can make her own salads because she has a lemon right there and olive oil, the salt. It's super easy. I put it in my tea, like my, tonight, my tisane is gonna have a squeeze of lemon and that nice little mint sprig and, okay. Is this helpful? Cause I, can you see better with the light on? Or is that worse? I think everyone is saying it's good. No, I have food, I have food, very I have food. Like, oh. okay, I'm adding all the, I'm adding the paste and it's gonna sizzle when I add it. I can tell you that this makes a mess. This dish will splatter all over your counter, all over your floor, and all over your shirt, so I, I'm wearing an apron. Um, I will mop the floor afterwards. It is worth it. It is worth, it is absolutely worth the dirty floor, so. Everyone who is here is, loves cooking. We all know that if you love cooking, it's, not, it's gonna be dirty at some point. Exactly. And my husband will wash the dishes, but he won't clean the floor. We have a very decided division of labor, and he just won't clean the floor. He goes, it's not dirty, what? I don't see it. <laughs> but I, I love that. Um, someone is asking, um, is it okay to eat the anchovies uh, out of the refrigerator when the oil is solid? Um, it will last longer if you refrigerate it. You can keep it out, but it will last longer. I mean, if it's a closed jar, you're fine, but once you open it, you're allowing oxygen to reach the, the oil and the anchovies, and the oxygen is what causes it to degrade. So as long as it's sealed from the store, you can keep it in the cabinet. When you open it, you can still keep it in the cabinet, but it'll go off much more quickly. Okay. Thank you. So tell us what you're doing. You're moving the... Okay, I was, I'm looking for my tomatoes. Oh, here they are. Okay, so now I'm gonna add, I have chopped up tomatoes, and I'm gonna throw it out. Now, normally I would add salt with the vegetables, but I'm not doing that because I have so many anchovies in there that if I added salt, it would just be unbearable. So I'm adding my tomatoes and I'm gonna cover the pan. I'm gonna let them cook for a few minutes. Hopefully you all are cooking your pasta at the same time. Yes, I'm sure everyone's doing so. Okay. So now that is going to cook, and I'm going to check my recipe to make sure I didn't forget anything. So Melissa, tell us, is there any time where you just get bored of cooking? No. I get bored of my own cooking, and then I have to go to someone else's recipes. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, it, it takes a lot. I mean, here we are. We're all in quarantine, right? For how long have we all been under lockdown? Eight weeks. And I've been cooking almost every single meal, except for we did a little takeout to support the neighborhood restaurants. But for the most part, I've been cooking three meals a day. And um, I am now getting tired of my own cooking. Yes, it is true. I really want someone to cook for me. I really, really, really want to go to a restaurant. But um, so I've, I've, I've gotten out some of my cookbooks and I'm, so I'm starting, like last night I made um, 
a uh, Mata Joffrey doll and basmati rice, and it was delicious, you know. And um, I just pulled out, oh, I pulled out this Armenian cookbook, and I'm going to start cooking from it. Um, there's some delicious looking flatbreads and stews, vegetable stews. So um, I think quarantine is a good time for you to challenge yourself, try to cook something outside your comfort zone. You know, you're not oh. cooking for guests, you're just cooking for your family or yourself. So I'd say, I always say, take a risk, try something new. And I'm doing that, I am doing that as well. Um, how high should the, oh, how high should the heat, it should be, it's um, medium at this point. So it is just simmering away. I say to let it cook for five to seven minutes. I don't think I'm gonna really let it cook that long. I'm gonna check it. And then I think, thank you. Um, I think uh, someone is asking the Instagram account that we have our cake, your cake recipe. I think it's a, you said it's a New York Times uh, uh, cooking uh, Instagram. Yes. If you if you actually just do an internet search for Melissa Clark's Snickerdoodle cake and it will come up in the New York Times. And it's in front of the paywall, so it's free. You can access it for free. Great, thank you. Oh, that looks delicious. Can you show again your, okay, Melissa, can you? Can again. Yeah, because I said delicious and everyone turned their head to look at it. Holding my laptop over it. How did you see it? Yeah, everyone saw it, I think. Um, someone is asking if we're, you're supposed to do anything with the butter at this point. Not no, yet. butter comes in at the end. So butter and lemon zest come in at the end. So at this point, that is just simmering. That's my sauce. That's it. See how easy this recipe is? This is super easy. And I'm going to show you my cake because I have a minute to kill here. So, can you see it, Evelyn? Yes, we can see it. It looks great. Okay, so that's our dessert. Pasta and cake. We're not having a very light meal tonight, but you know. I mean, who's eating light uh, during the quarantine? I've heard that no one is gluten-free anymore. So it's, it's just, we're gonna have a salad with it, but it's just, I mean, everybody wants carbs, carbs, carbs. Me too. You know, I mean, we look forward to dinner time. It's like the thing that we all are doing together is looking forward to dinner time. Yes. Um, I know that everybody out there, obviously, you're all, you're all food lovers. Um, oh, someone says, did you cook the tomatoes only? So I cooked the tomatoes with the, that paste that I made, the anchovy garlic herb paste. That's all, that, so I cooked the anchovy garlic herbs first with the red pepper, and then I added the tomato after that had cooked a little bit. So I'm gonna taste it and see where we're at with this. Um, someone is asking if we can share the recipe at the end. Do I have your cookbook. Do you mind if I, we put the recipe on our website? At the, okay, yeah. great. Thank you. I mean, maybe not. Um, yeah, we'll figure it out. Put it later. Okay. I definitely added too much red pepper. Hmm. <laughs> is your daughter going to find it too spicy? I don't know. We're going to see what happens when I could put the pasta in there. It is possible. But she's going to get a quesadilla tonight. This happens sometimes. <laughs> how, how, how often do you taste when you cook? All the time, constantly. Um, because you need to know how to adjust. Like I was checking to see if that needed a salt or acid or it, just something to, you know, to bring out the flavors. And it's good. It's salty enough. It's definitely, my tomatoes are not that sweet because it's when, you know, we're not in tomato season. So it doesn't need any acid. Sometimes when you get super sweet tomatoes, I might want to add a little bit of lemon juice or vinegar. I mean, honestly, I could add a pinch of sugar to that and that would not. Should I do that? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to show you something because um, I've been cooking from this 1955. I know uh, that book. Oh yeah, it belonged it belong to my grandmother and uh, there are a lot of places where she puts sugar, like a spoon yeah. of sugar in the sauce and everything. Um, good balance. Yeah, very, very good balance. I think I'm not going to do the sugar. I'm just going to do extra butter. Ah, yeah, of course. Butter is always good. Yeah, it'll, it'll smooth out. All right, let me see how we're at. Okay, you know what you can see? I'm going to show you. I hope you can see. So at the beginning, um, it was very saucy. Now you can see that it's kind of, you can see the pan. See how the tomatoes yes. are staying, like they're not, you, I, they have, um, how do I describe this? When I go like that, they stay. 
Do you know they're not, it's like they have structure, they're absorbing a lot of the liquid and then that's what I want. And now I'm gonna add my pasta and I'm gonna add um, some pasta cooking water. I'm gonna see if I need pasta cooking water if it looks dry and then my butter. That's key, I'm gonna get my pasta, it's right in the sink over here. Draining and not the best thing to do. And if everyone um, wants to, we're, we, we asked Melissa if we could record this video. So we will, uh, tomorrow we will have the video, the recording of the video so you can redo it again. I see that someone arrived um, a little late. So we, you will be able to dis do this again. Okay, can you see? Can you let's yes. see? Yeah, adding, yeah, better, great. Adding the pasta. And now I'm turning off the heat and I'm adding my chunk of butter and I've got my tongs and I'm going to toss it all together. And I would be adding my lemon zest except I screwed up and I forgot about the lemon zest. So. Oh, uh, one question I have for you because there's a lot of debates around this. Uh, what did you do with your pasta? Did you rinse them? Did you not rinse them? Did uh, you no rinse. No, no rinse. So you just uh, take out the water and you keep them in the bowl until you put them in your pan, right? Okay, let's see how this goes. So as you can see, it's not a very saucy, saucy pasta, but this paste has so much flavor that you don't need a lot of it, you know? It's very restrained in terms of sauce, which is, which is a good thing, because it's good for the flavor. I use, you know, there are 12 anchovies in this. Someone is saying, is saying that it reminds them of putanesca sauce. It is, it is a version of Putinesca for sure. It is not, not very different. You know, the lemon zest and the butter. I mean, that is one thing about French food versus Italian food, butter. Yes, not olive oil. So this has both, so it's a little French, a little Italian. I'm asking, Violet is asking if there is still a flame under the pan at this stage. Yeah. There is no flame. I turn the flame off. I'm using the residual heat of the pan because I don't want to overcook the pasta. All right, now I'm going to try it. I'm going to, I'm going to see. We're going to see how I did. We all want to try. We're all very silent. Oh, it's not too spicy. Oh, it's good. All right, what does it need? It needs that squeeze of lemon. Even though it's very, you know, even though it's tart, it still needs, needs a squeeze of lemon. Actually needs a little salt, which I'm surprised at. Oh. So I'm gonna add my salt. How do you feel about adding cheese? Someone is asking about, uh, do we oh, put cheese on it? Go for it. Yes, go for it. Cheese, absolutely. We, we only, I mean, I believe that we only need to go for Parmesan and on anything, anyway. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, my husband doesn't eat cheese, so I don't put it on his, but I could put it on my, my portion. Okay, and um, I forgot to, I was, so did you see that big pile of herbs on my cutting board at the beginning? I was supposed to have saved about a tablespoon for garnish and I totally forgot. So I hope you saved some. If you didn't, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna go chop up some more before I serve it, so there should be. And also I'm gonna add some black pepper. I just, I want a little more. I really thought the red pepper was gonna to be too spicy this time. Um, so what kind of salt do you use? Valerie is asking what kind of salt do you use? What kind of which? Sa salt, sorry. Oh, okay, so this is, I'll show you, I have really good salt. And it is from France, and it is a giant ah. container of fleur de sel. This is fantastic salt. Um, this does not even last me that long. I used to, buy, you know, I used to bring it home from France when I was um, younger, and I would go. My, we would always carry back big things of salt, but now you can buy this here. So, so I, that was actually one question that I had for you. What? Oh, someone is showing that they have. Uh, ah, the same one. Yes, exactly. Although you have a little one. Yeah, yours is little. I got the big one. <laughs> even, even is also saying, someone else is saying that she's using the same salt. Um, that's one question that I have for you. What, what, when you travel to France, what do you bring back? What, uh, 
as food wise i mean is there anything that you always have in your suitcase yeah so it used to be i would bring back salt i would bring back um god i brought all kinds of things you know i used to bring back a lot of extracts i'd bring back vanilla beans um i would go to au marché right before to their you know beautiful gourmet market in paris and i would just buy all kinds of stuff jams i would bring back um those wonderful um christine ferbe jams you know mm -hmm. um, And what else would I bring? Honey, you know, local honey. But this was, you know, but now you can get some of it, so much of that stuff, but I still bring back mustard. I bring back Dijon mustard because I find that it is so much better in France than even the stuff you get here. And part of it is because it's fresher. Um, we don't have a mustard turnover like they do in France. People in France use a lot of mustard. For a while, there was a my store, you know, my mustard. There was a my store by Union Square, where they had very fresh, beautiful mustard that they closed. So I bring back mustard, that is something. Um, and then if I see something that I like praline paste, you know, I used to bring back sheet gelatin. You couldn't buy sheets of gelatin. You could only buy the powder. So I used to bring back that. And you know, lots of clothes and shoes. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. Obviously. But we're gonna need another discussion about this. <laughs> Um, someone is saying that they have the same shopping list um, and someone is saying that they're getting a lot of good ideas for their French club. So that's great. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is done. Gosh, I, I'm going to have, I'm going to take another bite. I'm going to bring you with me so you can see it. So you can see what it looks like. Um, now, when I serve it to my family, I'm going to put more herbs on it. Can you see? Yeah. So you can see, like, it's not super tomatoey, but just tomatoey enough. Mm. Oh, good. Good. Mm -hmm. It looks delicious. I'm I'm jealous. I'm gonna open a bottle of Beaujolais. Oh yes. So um, I would like to ask our participants if they have a question regard to our uh, to Melissa regarding this recipe or on any other question. Um, one new message I see. Um, if Melissa could just name the herbs she used. Um, it would be helpful so so in the recipe i say parsley and either basil or mint and that is great what i really used i used just stuff from my deck so i have parsley basil mint dill lovage and um chives okay um my friend melinda is asking uh what is your favorite pantry items that you recommend uh that everyone stuck up on uh and she's also mentioning she was happy she had anchovies Jeez. Yes, anchovies. An get, get your anchovies, people. Um, anchovies, you know, all, you got to have the basics. You have to have your anchovies, your garlic, your olive oil, your pasta, your good Parmesan cheese, your beans, um, rice, and then really good. I told everyone, I did this too at the beginning of the whole lockdown, but replace all your spices because chances are your spices, like if you can't remember the last time you replaced your spices, replace them because it really makes a difference. I bought beautiful spices and everything just smells fresh and it just, it makes a huge difference. That's important. That's a good tip or so. Um, that's a good question, I believe. Uh, if you have leftovers, uh, how do you prefer to re-eat re re your pasta? Um, all right, I don't eat leftover pasta. My husband eats it and he puts it in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> my my um, grandmother had to had a tip for me when the pasta don't have um, sauce, uh, she puts a tiny little bit of milk in the pan. Oh, interesting. Huh. Um, and then you get back the butter and everything. You get back the, yeah. yeah. Uh, someone is asking, Susan is asking, if you don't like the available tomatoes, are there canned or boxed tomatoes that you particularly recommend? You can, okay, so there's this, I forget what the brand is, there's an Italian brand that sells in a can, it's a small can of cherry tomatoes, like little tomatoes, and those are delicious and sweet. And if you can, I think maybe it's Muti is the brand, if you can find the little tomatoes, that is, um, and you know, gourmet shops have them, you know, specialty markets have them. Um, if you're in New York, you really can probably find them. If you're some, somewhere else, you might have to mail order them, but like Gustiamo is a fantastic Italian food website, um, gustiamo.com, and they will have them. So that is a great thing to, to, to use instead of the fresh. Um, yeah, my tomatoes aren't great. They're all right. It's still good. Believe me, we're going to be very happy. <laughs> I'm sure we, we have no doubt. Um, 
What about um, some of Roby is ask, asking, where do you buy sheet gelatin now? Now I buy it online, I where I buy everything. But it's not, I mean, you can find it also. Um, where do I buy it? I mean, there are baking supply websites. I can't remember the name of them, but if you go just, you know, find a baking supply, there's one called actually New York Cake, which is good. I buy a lot of stuff from them and they have it. And they, I buy vanilla beans from them as well. Yeah. And do you, what did you think actually of all those uh, uh, companies that used to serve restaurants and are now serving um, uh, individuals, like for example, Baldor and things like this? That's yeah. I there's a there's a company called the Chef's Warehouse, and they're fabulous, and that's where I got those anchovies. So I've been bulk ordering, um, fifty pound bag of flour, uh, yeah, you know, giant yeah. thing of yeast. But, or chocolate chips. What? Or chocolate chips. Yeah, like, I got chocolate like, chips. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you think of what what this quarantine is doing to cooking? Is it? I, is it bringing something new to um, the movement of cooking? What What is it, um, the silver lining of all of this? I mean, I do think so. I think people are finally having the time to cook. I think a lot of people love cooking and they don't have the time and now they have the time. I think people are trying new things. So many people are baking. I love that. People are making their own bread. People are baking cakes. You know, I, I, I think it's cooking is kind of saving us in a way, you know, it's saving our sanity. And I feel bad for the people who really, really, really don't want to cook because it's harder for them to get the takeout and stuff like that. But if you want to cook and you like cooking, I think it's very gratifying. Does anyone want to show Melissa their pasta, what it looks like so that she can... Um... <laughs> Did anyone actually make it? Oh, yeah, no. No, so someone is showing uh, it's Arabs. Uh, uh, yeah. Me. Oh, yeah, the Arabs. Oh, I can see a Jane. We can see Jane's pasta. Rob Violet. Uh, Dana. That's great. That's really amazing. I'm scrolling through and looking. Oh my gosh. Love yeah. That's wonderful. So, um, Anyone has any other question? I wanted to ask you a question that uh, is important to to me. Um, what do you, what do you think of what it means to be a woman in the cooking industry uh, today? Is that do you find it hard? What's what's your take on this? Well, I mean, I do feel like um, you know, women chefs, and you know, there's always been a divide in the food industry. There are the food writers. Were, and recipe writers were predominantly women and chefs were predominantly men, right? There's in this sort of historic divide that's changing a lot. So more and more women are finding mentorships in the kitchen. They're able to find places for them. It's not easy. It's definitely not easy. There's still a lot of discrimination against women, but it's easier. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen though after this. I don't know what's gonna happen to restaurants. I don't know what's gonna happen to women. Um, in restaurants, I think everything is going to have to get redefined. So I hope we keep the gains. Maybe we'll even gain more. Um, I don't know. Every chef out there has to become flexible. You know, they're going to have to figure out a way to create a business and a revenue stream that is different from what they're used to. So they're all going to have to be nimble and flexible. And I think that might be helping to might, might help to bridge the gender gap because we won't have the same kind of kitchen formality mm -hmm. maybe so right. it'll be interesting to see um before we wrap it up i just want to ask you the last question that i see on the screen so um someone is saying uh, jennifer is saying olive oil in cake has been a revelation so i guess she's thanking you for this um the cooking as susan is saying that cooking has been helping your college Age son cop with a lack of schedule. Roby is saying that it smells so good. <laughs> I'm so glad. And then Pascal is asking, um, if they, you don't eat this uh, dish for a while, should we keep the pasta separate for now? And yeah. then we eat the paste and pasta separately? Yes, keep it. Oh. Like, do, you, do you assemble everything together and I then eat everything or? No, I mean, I'm just doing it now for you guys, but normally I would keep it separate and then put it together right before serving. Okay. 
So hopefully my is going to be all right. I think it's going to be okay. The pasta may be a little mushy, but I think it'll be fine. Um, someone is also asking, how often do you go to France? And if you just go to Paris, I would say no, looking at the picture of your books, you're not just going to Paris. No, I go all over. I go all over. My mother especially loved Provence. So yeah. we spent a lot of time there when I was a kid, but we went all over the country. I mean, it was so great. We exchanged with people all over the country. We were just, in, I think, almost every part of France. Um, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to go back. We go, I mean, at least once a year. Sometimes I, sometimes I can sneak off and go twice a year, but everything's changing and I don't know what is going to happen. Um, so we'll see what happens. Well, thank you so much, Melissa. I, uh, you really um, made me travel to France tonight and I hope you, everyone also traveled uh, at least through the smell of the kitchen and everything. Um, and so uh, it was wonderful. We're really grateful for the time you took and please send us a note and tell us how much you enjoyed your plate. If, uh, if you were happy with the recipe, your result. And we look forward to doing that again uh, soon. Thank you, Emmeline. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye, everyone.